afternoon and welcome to Options Center. Just wanted to do an intraday update. I think we got our turn back to the upside for a bounce. If you're a bull, um, I don't see any real count on uh, getting you to a higher high at this point, but uh, we're gonna keep our eye out. Um, we're gonna go on SPX, NASDAQ, and we'll probably check out uh, a few individual names to show you what we're looking at and why we thought we were getting the um, the reversal here instead of uh, completely falling out of bed at, uh, today on Monday. So um, it's 8723, welcome everybody. Let's jump into it. We're gonna do SPX on the daily time frame right now. And we're looking at um, uh, the negative divergence here. We got that, we got the turn and we're underneath the eight EMA. Um, so we're trending in the downside, but we're, we came into last week on Friday, we came into support here. Um, we had this support marked and we looked uh, as we were closing right into it, we went, we put on our long hedges and now we're actually turning. Uh, we have a, uh, more call plays with a few puts on uh, longer distance, but um, what we're looking at it is just a bounce. In a nutshell, we're just looking for a bounce. So you see the confluence of this support here in the fuchsia you also have this gray kind of uh rising pivot that um let, let's look back let's change this time frame over to um let's go to 20 years <clears throat> now if we look back um in this time frame you see back here in 2018 we can scroll over there and you see the megaphone pattern there that's that gray rising pivot we have right here, points here, all the way through. It's a zone. So I tried to make it uh, wide as wide as possible as I think our swim would provide. Um, we had uh, gotten over it. We um, really uh, rejected off of here, got over it and uh, fake break there. Same thing's happening now. We'll dig in just a little bit closer here on the daily. So um, we're coming into that confluence. Um, also, this rising pivot from the went a little too quick there. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I put on that longer time frame. Okay, from earlier here in October and uh, February, those highs, this bar, this uh, line, trend line connects from there. So that was um, uh, a difficult place to get over. Once we got over, we came back, we're retesting it now. And so that's it. all sorts of confluence here um, that gives us a, a, a credible place to go long. If we would have broke down under here or gap down, that would have been a whole nother story. We did gap up and uh, it, we threatened to go lower, but uh, have not been able to yet. So um, let's see if we can put on a few. If we're looking at um, some of our indicators, putting on the MACD, the MACD is uh, heading lower, but we are at a rising pivot on the MACD. So that's so why we're getting a reaction. Same thing with the RSI. I can draw a line there. Uh, we're also in the oversold area. So again, we're just looking for a bounce before going lower. We're getting that early buy signal on the, um, the RSI stochastic. And we're in an uh, oversold area, just entering oversold area. I don't suspect that we'll get much out of this. I think that um, most of our time, just like when you're in a bull run, you'll spend a lot of your time up near there because the trend is strong, right? So the trend is getting stronger to the downside and we suspect we'll, we'll be playing. Uh, I, I doubt on the daily time frame possible that we'll get fully into oversold or overbought area. <clears throat> and um, let's see what else we can put up. We have... All right, looking at, this is the stuff we already went over. Uh, we're looking for the trend. We came up to the upper Bollinger Band. We're not finding, we're not gonna find any real support here for a major bounce till a probably much, much lower. So uh, I don't wanna waste your time with these, um, a lot of these indicators. We have the oscillator, came into oversold area. So clearly looking for some sort of bounce. We didn't have to, but we got it and our summation should be turning downward, um, starting its trend lower. We talked about that um, 
couple videos ago as well. And so let's go ahead and take off the indicators and we'll go down to the 65 minute. On the 65 minute, we'll take a look at a little bit more of the details of the market. Um, we have our Elliott wave. We're messing around with this 786 retracement. Now, what I have marked here for the Elliott wave, after we got our reversal, we do have one, two, three, four, and five waves here. Okay, so that's very valid as a possible start of the end, excuse me, of wave one here. But I'm not actually looking at it that way. This is the um, more conservative way to look at it. You get a five wave move down, four would be overlapping one. So just not as likely. Um, I'm looking at this more or less as a, <clears throat> taking this three, five, get these out of here. And we'll replace these with a one, two, one, two setup. Okay, so that is a little bit more bearish. We're looking for more downside. So we have a one, two, five wave move down for one. And then the two is not done yet. We have a three wave move up for an A here. Three wave move down. You can go in a lower time frame to look at that <clears throat> for a B. And then we're working on an impulsive C. Now, the reason why this seems more likely to me is it's going to be a little bit more confusing. Um, the If this were a wave one down here ending this wave um, uh, sequence, then we would have an ABC up for wave two. But I think it would be a lot more confusing if we just get a five wave move up from here and then the bulls are gonna say, we got our five waves, and now we're gonna come down for a wave two, and then we start going much higher for, for new highs. That's gonna be much more confusing than seeing a three wave move here and then going lower. So those are the two scenarios we're kind of looking for is either get our three wave move up, and we'll call this the end of wave one, and two will be up here, or this is a one, two, one, two. So those are the two bearish situations we're looking at right now. And the reason why, uh, there's there's multiple reasons, but a um, couple reasons why we uh, are, have been able to um, time this, uh, not really time, but just identify this turn is because of our lower time frame indicators. And you see, we started getting some bullish or positive divergence to the upside when we got our lows on Friday. So that gave us a hint that um, the market is is uh, losing momentum to the downside. And so we have that divergence on the RSI as well. And on the stochastics, you see here. So we have a buy signal here and we have conditions here. So that's why we're looking at um, um, that situation. Our alternative uh, was that this is a uh, one, two, and we already had our one, two, and we're heading much lower from here. That has not been invalidated, okay? I, I will say that right now, the market could turn and could continue to go, but we do have these conditions here to where uh, I think that um, we're gonna continue with this bounce into CPI, and then we'll be looking to short um, around uh, maybe later Wednesday and uh, to confirm overnight because we have CPI on Thursday morning before the market open. So um, there's there's more. It's not just indicators. It's also there's um, there's other ways that I look at trying to get turns. Okay, we were looking at Apple and Tesla. They were leading the market down. Okay. Well, Apple came right into the options expected move for the week. I'm not saying that uh, Apple's going to turn here and just uh, uh, go to all-time highs. That's not the thing, but it started to stabilize. I said that in the options, guys. Check that out. It's a Discord that um, uh, we post there, and we have some great traders, and we're, we're severely oversold. 
uh, coming into the options expected move. We could go a little bit further, but uh, we're looking at just stabilizing here. We'll stop the market from going down. Now, same thing with Tesla. These are your leaders right now. So Tesla, I feel, is going to be um, a good leader on the bounce coming up here. So we went on Tesla as well into this week uh, for this Friday expiration. We have a five-wave move down. We had a three-wave correction and a ending diagonal. One, two, three, four, five for an ending diagonal to end this move here. So if this is an ABC for the bulls, you got your falling wedge, you probably go higher. Okay, for the bears, uh, we're, we're, we're simply just um, setting up for lower prices here. So I, I don't think we can count it just like that as the uh, one, uh, excuse me, a one, two, and then possibly I'll have to figure it out. But um, if this thing's gonna move, it's gonna be one, two, one, two, set up, okay? So we have five wave move down into the um, uh, bottom of the wedge here. So we're going, we're looking for higher prices, whether you're a bull or a bear. We have the divergences here on the uh, MACD. We're looking for another, we're not, we're probably not going to get that uh, buy signal on the MACD for a little bit of time here. Not today. You have an early buy signal with uh, the RSI you see is also in uh, positive divergence conditions. And then you have, the early buy signal here on the stochastic, but it you, you don't get confirmation until it crosses back over that 20. We're at 17 right now. Um, same thing with the stochastic. I went long there because we're into support and we have some um, some conditions kind of uh, uh, firming up. And it is um, if you look at it, it typically on a on a weekly basis, we have um, Monday typically follows whatever Friday does. So Friday was very bearish, and so we had our bearish uh, follow through. And then on Tuesday, we have our turnaround Tuesday, and that's just something that, that, um, that's that been playing out for years. Uh, so we look for the market to firm up on Monday into Tuesday, we maybe get a reversal candle and uh, go um, get our reversal for Tuesday. That's just kind of a uh, just just a like a seasonality and uh, the weekly time frame. Okay, so now for so we went long on Tesla. We're also looking to go long on Microsoft. Microsoft has been long overdue for a bounce. We have our let's go in here. We're on the sixty-five minute time frame. We're on a uh, pit, a rising pivot from uh, a long time ago. It's a it's a long term rising pivot. We are testing that pivot again, uh, very similar to how SPX was, and we're we're on that support there. So we're looking for a move to the upside. We have a uh, leading diagonal here. One wave one two. No, it's not even a leading diagonal. I, I, the um, wave four does not cross wave one. I don't believe here so no it does not so one two three four five wave move down and we're looking for the a uh our first move up here for a our b and then when we break out from this downtrend or this it's kind of triangulating here we should see at least at, at at minimum our first stop will be the 335 and then we'll be looking for uh somewhere around this gap to test the gap at about 340. So that's what we're playing for. You see these again, we have uh, slight divergence here, and then we have our trend lines forming on the RSI and on the stochastics as well with the um, slightly bullish divergence. And we're waiting for these to flip and cross back bullish. So you see that uh, we're getting really tight price action in here. And when we pop out of it, whether it's to the top or bottom, we'll stop out below and uh, we'll, we'll get our trade going on above um and then something to look forward to is the nasdaq if we want this to play out well so we're we're seeing just a little bit of strength now in the nasdaq the nasdaq was leading us lower so we can look at this from the point of view nasdaq futures or uh qqq doesn't matter i think um we have that this we have this trend line here from the lows 
and we're we're playing around with that trend line with positive divergence so you know we'll have to see make sure that holds we are getting a reaction off but this could be this could be a um you know perhaps a, a descending triangle so if we start breaking down from there but we're we're messing around with the trend line right now we're getting again like those early buy signals with uh, positive divergence we made a slight new low again and i think that's i think that's gonna hold we'll see i definitely don't want to keep um calls unhedged overnight on a play like this because uh, the market is certainly bearish with a bearish bias and if we look at qqq let's go ahead and go down here with the um let's see if we can get a closer look and 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 show you i actually put on a um a call play on qqq as well and so let's take off the indicators and let's kind of let's grind down to the 15 minute on the 15 minute and then we'll we'll set the board to the elliott wave all right so with our elliott wave action here we have the 786 that we're kind of playing with we're oscillating around and uh we um got a gap up from sunday night close that gap which is pretty typical for uh the futures is to close gaps really fast now on the futures um i know that we have one that's unclosed and so that's another reason why i think hey we might have to uh go close that gap before heading much lower so we got our um our move down for our one two uh, but we have a possible a it looks like a one two three wave move up and then what was confusing was that this is an impulsive one, two, three, four, five wave move down. So why was I bullish if this is a five wave move down? Well, first of all, because we should at minimum get our retracement here for uh, for a one, two setup. But um, I noticed that this three wave move up and this complete down here for five wave move um, completed a C, a wave C. So we have a A, B, C for A, A, B, C for B. That's the confusing thing right there. This is actually a B wave, okay? And this is the C of B expanded flat. And now we're getting an A, or excuse me, we should, we should be getting a, um, oh, uh, no, this is what I noticed. I'm, I'm completely confusing you now. So let's start over. We have our low here. We have an A, B, C for an A. We made our new slight low right here. This was actually a zigzag for uh, A. When most people th were thinking this is a wave of one. And then we got our B and then we got our C wave down. And now we're looking for an impulsive move up that's going to confuse traders. So we're looking for some sort of one, two, three, four, and five to complete somewhere around the 618 retracement. It could be the 50%, it could be the 786, it could be any of those. But when we start to get into these zones, then we start to take off um, some of our uh, calls and we start looking for lower for the reversal for lower prices so that's that's the hard part about this is once you get you have five wave move five wave move down here it made a slight new positive divergence low and uh we uh we went long on this slight low there okay so let me see if i have a let's put on the elliott wave oscillator now, if you go over to this little icon here, this is um, usually a good way to see if the uh, if the uh, Elliott wave is saying that there is a low in. So, Elliott oscillator, double click on that and apply. And we're on the 15 minute chart, so we should see a little sensitivity there. And you see where we're getting the divergence 